senior majoring in Asian American Studies. And so this summer, um, I guess the project that I did um, is titled uh, Leadership Development and Social Change Among Asian International Students at Stanford. There we go. Outline. So um, today, a um, brief outline. I'll go through an introduction, uh, my project summary, the outcomes, um, a little bit about my experience and moving forward. So introduction. So why did I do this study and kind of what inspired me? Well, um, I've previously worked with Volunteers in Asia, which is the program um, I've been a part of. And actually, third week into that program, um, a, a short-term study abroad program, I had the idea like, oh, why don't I study abroad um, in Japan? Because I made new friends. So I ended up um, abroad in Kyoto through the Overseas Studies program. And so the students I met there, a lot of them were from Japan. And they kind of, they loved being at Stanford so much um, throughout this program that I met them that they kind of wanted to recreate um, this type of experience which resulted in the Asia Elite Business Scholars. Um, so students from East Asia, from mainland China, um, Taiwan and Japan gathered in Tokyo for kind of like a three day um, global exchange program. And it was pretty cool because it all kind of started through where they met here at Stanford um, through a, a program. So next summer, um, I decided to do it again. Um, and this time, kind of study it. Um, what, you know, what happened? What caused them to have these types of ideas to like meet at a location and then kind of recreate a thing and bring in new people? So, um, oh, oops. I don't know how to go back. There we go. Um, so again, the um, organization that I was a part of is Volunteers in Asia. Um, which is about a 50-year-old nonprofit that actually started by the Dean of Freshman Men here um, at Stanford. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty old of ties here. Um, and specifically, the program I worked with was the American Language and Culture Program. Um, it's about 30 years um, here. So for the program itself, um, it was a four-week study abroad program at Stanford University. Students from universities in East Asia, so that's um, mainland China, um, Macau, students from Taiwan and Japan. Um, this year there weren't students from Korea, but sometimes they come and sometimes they don't. Um, part of that, they are required to, to enroll in a research writing course in English. Um, for us students here at Stanford, um, we don't have remedial English classes per se, so it's a bit challenging for them because we take power and you're just supposed to know how your grammar already, so research and writing for them is kind of a big thing for um, Asian students um, whose um, primary language um, is not English necessarily. Um, so there's a lot of curricular and co-curricular programs, so we bring them to various um, companies or social events or things like that. Um, and of course they also live in the dormitory, so this time they stay in what we call um, which was the year after as well. So project summary, split up into two parts for the community summer research internship. So the internship part, um, for me what I had to do uh, was the one week leadership training right before, and as a program coordinator, the official title, um, to build community in the dorm. So that's basic RAing. Um, this year, I'm an RA in time, which is kind of fun. So I kind of had my like pre-RA experiences through this program. Um, and then the second part is design curricular and co-curricular programming. So the three types of programming, in addition to the courses, is um, around the themes of the American work culture. So we bring them to places like Google, YouTube, Facebook, Apple, but also we brought them to like Mozilla. Um, I didn't know that that was actually a nonprofit or other types of things like that to get them kind of culture to what those things are. Um, the second part is actually volunteering. And before being a part of this program, I didn't realize that I guess volunteering is kind of a different and non common thing outside of the United States. So um, we brought them to potentially soup kitchens or packing things or making crafts for little children. Um, so there's that type. And the third part kind of encompasses everything, which is like the fun social things. So if we bring them to Great America or we bring them to some other um, fun place, um, coordinating things like fountain hopping. Unfortunately, the drought happens, so we can't do fountain hopping for them um, on campus. And of course, they came here to take an English class. So we do assist them with their academic assignments. And what's interesting is that um, we're also not allowed to technically correct their grammar. Um, it's the research writing, the, the way of thinking, the critical inquiry that they really try to emphasize and stress in this program. Um, so yeah, 
On the research side, it was an ethnography, so I was there from the beginning to the end. Um, participatory observation pretty much 24-7. Um, it's basically camp, um, and you're just awake, and you're asleep, and you just keep writing. Um, interviews, um, informal, unformal, semi-structured, um, things like that. And really, my initial research question coming in was, how do curricular and co-curricular programs impact leadership development? Um, so, yeah. So, outcomes. So um, basically, it may, be, it may be pretty obvious to some people that the more student is involved, the higher the personal development. And that really reaffirms um, Aston's um, theory of student involvement, his fourth postulate, basically states the same exact thing. The more people are involved, the more people are engaged, there is something going, there is learning happening. And because it's kind of a camp and a forward program and it's kind of like nonstop, literally, it, you can kind of argue that every moment they are growing. Um, but more um, specifically, um, the 12 students I looked at um, overall increased their leadership according to the eight values of the social change model of leadership development. Um, that's a particular theory and the values are stated right over here. I'm still in the preliminary um, realms of like, analyzing that, those things, but essentially through my participatory observations and interacting with the students, essentially I have a matrix and I have it from beginning to the end. I have poignant events, and I have these 12 students like on my radar, and let's see what happens, their first initial when we meet them at the airport, um, and I judge them on their grid here. So it's a kind of a weird structured participatory observation, and we see how spontaneous or planned or curriculum program. So through my analysis, while I'm going through my field notes right now, I'm going to see when the students supposedly have a breakthrough and see if there's a trend with specific events, which one of those, um, if there's a trend among specific things, like maybe it's throwing that party in my room for my students. Maybe it was that one time we just wanted to go to the library and do Nerf gun shooting or something. Um, maybe it's the life map activity where we ask the students to formally, literally say, make a life map. You have however questionable amounts of time they make it, and then, oh, now you present it and how they exchange their, their English courses. So kind of looking at what are the things specifically in the program and their experience that really enhance um, their development. Um, so of course, in this program, of course, they get practice using English language regularly. Um, for a lot of them, which is the most, they will have to have studied English or use it. Um, a lot of the times, students from East Asia, uh, all around the world, are now using English or learning it, but they don't necessarily um, Read, read it all the time or speak it all the time and have to respond um, in such a quick and timely manner. Um, and of course, usually the outcomes do come from new friends from parts of East Asia. Um, and exposure to Asian culture and language in addition to American. So a lot of the jokes that come around the program is that this is an American language and culture, this is Asian language and culture, because people start sharing their stories like, what is it like in Japan? And their stereotypes like, oh, I thought Japanese people or like mean or something, or like what about like, wait, is Taiwan really a part of China? Wait, what about Macau? Like those conversations. And really, um, they get to be placed in a, in a program where they're away from their countries, they're away from all these other stereotypes, and they're gonna be forced to grapple with what they know and potentially question other people and what are they getting out of that. So in addition, um, the program provides a space for Asian students to talk about Asian culture and Asian things. And historically, East Asia isn't necessarily the most friendly with each other. Um, a lot of wars and other things like that. And even things today, um, if you guys know about the Sunflower Movement that happened in Taiwan, um, recent things that happened in Hong Kong, a ship going down to Korea, Japan, offering help, but Korea not. So it provides these opportunities for students to engage um, in conversations that they probably not necessarily would have. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So for my experience, challenges getting enough sleep. <laughs> pretty pretty um, normal, I guess, for a Stanford student and for a program that happens from beginning to end. Um, pretty much you're always on call. Um, and the second part is working with new teams and different backgrounds and the random things that show up. So again, I've done this program um, before and helped out. So it was difficult for me to be like, I know how we're supposed to do this. I know that it, the best way to do it is this way, but I have a new set team, a new set of people, and I have to kind of like, okay, 
it's not the same. Um, yeah, and then the random layers that come up, like even though I've done this program again, there's just new things that pop up all over the time. Sometimes maybe a car will break down, or you're missing an item for the class, or the location of the room was changed and it was double booked. Um, things you always have to um, deal with. And financial stuff, the other things that this is not a Stanford University program, it is a nonprofit. So we don't have the amenities um, at Stanford, but I do have Stanford, we did have Stanford privileges. Um, it's kind of a weird negotiation there. Um, third thing, also allowing others to perform tasks and being satisfied with the outcome. This again comes as me being a returning person um, and allowing other people to develop. So although the primary focus was on the students, their job development, I am working with a team. I have six people on my team, there's another sort of six and different staff members. So for me, um, I feel like I am experienced, but sometimes you have to like, um, let go because it is a collective and collaborative. Um, taking enough personal time and to rest, always doing that. Personally, I think I increased my leadership skills, hopefully, because it though. <laughs> um, new friends from East Asia and the US too. More exposure to, more exposure to Asian culture. Um, hopefully honed research skills. This is the first time I had to take really like a lot of notes and doing it better. And since I'm not getting as much sleep, I have to be better at making succinct notes and the poignant things. Um, random pieces of paper, receipts or something. <laughs> Um, putting them together, make sure I have them all together. And actually, a newfound career interest in East Asia. Um, so, that's great. Moving forward, um, hopefully, I'll continue this longitudinal study with follow up interviews to examine impacts months later. Because it happened for four weeks, but does it necessarily stop? So, hopefully, following up later. Further develop research into my undergraduate honors thesis in education. And third of all, assess program components and suggest recommendations to improve and enhance the program for the future because it is going on in the year, I presume. <laughs> um, so, with that, thank you.